Hello everyone and welcome back to Easy English. In today's video we want to go over the speaking section of the IELTS and we want to talk about fluency. There are many articles and many guidelines, videos on YouTube about fluency, but there is little to no explanation on like how to sound legit fluent. And don't get me wrong, I'm not going to be talking about the same things. Learn more words, learn more grammatical structures. No. I want you to know that you can still be fluent in English without knowing many words. But first, you need to understand what fluency is, and then I will provide some techniques for you to resolve those disfluencies in your speech. There are mainly two reasons why we go ah uh, in our speech. The first one is a language problem. So basically, you might just find it difficult to find a word and expression. Let me give you an example. You're talking about, let's say, your room and cleaning your room. And you just can't, when you're talking about it, you just can't think of the word vacuum cleaner. So you might even know the word, and when you see the word, you might recognize it. But the fact is that because of the fact that you haven't used that word quite often, you don't have an easy access to that word. And, well, this is kind of like, you know, um, identified as a language problem. The other common problem is that you get stuck in the structure. So basically, because of the fact that you're not very fluid with grammar usage, and when I say grammar, I mean all the structures that there are in the English language, you might just find yourself stuck. You don't know, like, you know, you get lost in your ideas and, you know, you don't know how to just wrap your idea up. So these are the language problems, and if you're a language learner and if you've been learning English, you would understand what I'm trying to talk about, and you would find it pretty much familiar. Even native speakers and the good speakers of the language might have a hard time to generate their ideas. So that's an idea generation problem, and that is when you don't find an answer to the question. So, I mean, let's say, let me just give you a simple example. Like, I ask somebody, what is 2 plus 2, and they go like, um, I don't know. You know, it's as easy as that. So you just don't know the answer to the question. That's why you say, ah, to buy yourself some time. And the other reason is that you might just have, and this is pretty, <laughs> this is something that I face myself. I have many ideas, but I cannot sometimes organize my thoughts. And it, that is natural. That is normal. Um, there are just so many things that you want to say. And it's just a matter of picking which one to say first. Therefore, you might just go on uh, to think about that organization. Now, let's go over an IELTS question in part one. And we want to answer this question in three different ways. Okay, so pay attention to how it goes. And you tell me which one sounds better. Keep thinking about it. Be judgmental about it. So the question is, do you prefer to save money or spend money? This is the first answer. I think uh, it's so much easier to... Uh, spend money than saving it uh, because the cost of living now is so high um, which makes it hard to even think of uh, putting some money aside okay as you can see there are just lots of odds this fluency is it just takes a long time for the person who's answering this question to like formulate their thoughts and uh, say what they want to say let's get to the second sample I think it's so much easier to spend money than saving it because the cost of living now is so high, which makes it hard to even think of putting some money aside. Instead of going, ah, oh, this time I just went silent completely. I just stayed quiet and said nothing and thought about what I wanted to say next. Did it sound better? I think it does sound better when you do that. Now, I would like to call this the rule of silence. And guys, silence is your best friend. It's better to say nothing at all than to go um and um because all those disfluencies might confuse the person that is listening to you. I mean, just forget about the IELTS exam for a second. Just imagine that you're talking to a friend. If you just say um or uh, you would just signal that you are not sure about what you're talking about. So, and you might just sound confused and unsure and uncertain. And these are all not good signals. 
Now, IELTS is a language proficiency test, but they are looking beyond the just grammar and vocabulary. They're, they want to assess that whether you are a suitable candidate to communicate in an English-speaking world. So go silent. Whenever you're not sure of what you're saying, just go silent. And you can practice this by recording your voice and trying to like listen to your own voice. And whenever you hear yourself saying ah uh, and ams a lot, just phrase the question in the IELTS again. Answer the question, record yourself, and stay silent. Okay. Try to punish yourself by starting over every time you make a mistake or every time you make this disfluency or whenever you say um and m, restart recording. This should be a sort of punishment. And when you punish your brain, it you would you are basically commanding your brain to do it the way you want to do. Okay. So keep doing that and you would get it right. Now also I want to answer the question that we had in a better way. There is also a better way than just staying silent. Okay, now let's learn what that is. Notice how I answered this question this time. Do you prefer to save money or spend money? I think, well, it's so much easier to, you know, spend money than saving it. Basically because the cost of living now is so high, I guess, which makes it hard to even think of just putting some money aside. All right, what is the difference now? What am I doing? I'm filling those gaps, those like parts that I was silent at with some words that do not really, really have a meaning. They probably do, but it's not without them. We can just make our sentences the way they are and wouldn't even change the meaning. These words are called filler phrases. And um, I would like you to know some of these filler phrases. They're pretty useful. And like native speakers use them very naturally. Basically, the reason that they do it is to give themselves a little bit of time to think about what they want to say next if they have like problems in formulating their ideas. Guys, ideally, a very good speaker would need neither of these stuff. You don't need to stay silent. You don't have to use these filler phrases. But if you want to sound natural, this is the way to do it. All right, guys. Now, I want to teach you some common filler words and expressions in English that you can use quite often. You get a lot of chances to use them. But the thing is that you got to try to use them naturally. And you need to find the right place to say them. Okay, so if you overdo it, you might just sound weird. It wouldn't sound as good. I'm going to probably make another video on how to use filler words appropriately. But for now, let's just learn these words. Repeat after me. Like. So. Okay. Well. You know. Actually, basically, I mean, just right, I guess, yeah, at the end of the day, literally, seriously, or something, I want to say, believe me. Highly. Let me be very clear. Needless to say, if you use a word or expression quite a lot, it would become a pet phrase. Now, comment down below if you know what a pet phrase is. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll be seeing you in the future videos.